Hello, Internet! It's not so long ago I did a video on a keyboardy type thing that doesn't do you regular keyboardy type things. It's called a loop deck, but then I pulled a video because I realised I'd shot a load of footage that I meant to put in the final video, but I didn't, probably because I was all flued up and on drugs. Not recreational drugs. Cold and flu medicine, of course. But then, when it came to re-editing the video, I thought to myself, no, I want to make this more about the photo editing workflow. So here it is, this video. But then, I got a tweet from this guy, Jason Newman, YouTube recommend your loop deck video to me. But alas, it was gone. Still interested in that one. Will it be posted eventually? Well, just for you, Jason, I'm going to show you little snippets of how this works, because I got it to improve my Lightroom workflow. So let's get started. Bam. And just in case if you missed the original video, this Loop Deck Plus thing is a keyboard that is designed for use with creative software like Lightroom. But first, a brief introduction about Lightroom, just in case you don't know what it's all about. It's a software made by a little known developer called Adobe. It catalogues your photos, allows you to make edits, and stores information about your adjustments and preview files. Before we get to the first step though, I do this. Now some people might prefer to put their files in a year, month, project name kind of folder organisation or date then project name, but the problem is I don't always remember which month I shot those photos in. So I just put all the project folders in the year main folder, numbered in chronological order. That works best for me. Okay, import. Oh yes, this is the exciting part. All the really sad part where you realise all the photos you've taken are absolute rubbish. I've just recently switched from Apple's Aperture to Lightroom, so look, I am no Lightroom God, which is why the title of this video is not How To Be A Lightroom God, although that would be a fantastic title. So here we are, build previews. I go from one to one. It takes a little bit longer to import the files, but that means that when you've got your preview file, you can zoom in and out and it doesn't take too much time. You know, to check your sharpness, if it's in focus and stuff like that and how noisy your image is. Add to collection, now you can add it to a number of different collections, not just one, but what I'll do first is just to have it under its project name. There we are. Okay, import. Time for a drink. Time to get another drink. <laughs> Actually, I'll also number the collections to match the folder structure on the drive. Anyway, once the import is done and the one-to-one -one previews are built, on to the next bit. Now for this rating process, I use library because you've got bigger thumbnails, it's easy to go through the whole process of rating it. However, one thing is I do need to zoom in to check focus. Oof, that's not a good view though. Reject it. Now this bit is so crucial to ensuring that your Lightroom workflow is super speedy and smooth, as smooth as a waxed helmet, no dirty jokes. And that is rating your photo. Now you can do it with your mouse by clicking these little stars here beneath your photo. Oh, one, one, one to five stars. By all means, if you enjoy making your life more difficult by clicking the little stars beneath the picture, that's fine. But you can just use the numbers here. Makes sense, doesn't it? One to five. And then six, six, seven, eight, nine. That's colours. But let's just stick to the stars for now. And for Jason Newman out there, Loop Deck. You've got dedicated buttons for the ratings here, and you can press this button to switch to colour ratings. Yeah, so for this part, it's just all on the keyboard, just flicking through the files and rating it. Now, of course, the whole purpose of this is to whittle down the amount of photos that you can end up working with, because there's no point editing and tweaking every single file that you import. That's just wasting a load of time and energy. Over the years, I've just learned to be completely brutal about it. You can't polish a poo. Flush it out. Don't even remember why I took these shots. I could just rate the worst shots with one star, but why bother even rating it? So if a photo's really bad, just delete it. If they suck when you're casually flicking through them, remove them. It's clutter in Lightroom and clutter in your drive. Just delete it from your life. So photos that just hit me instantly, boom like that, five stars. For me, that's a win. Some photos, they've got potential. Flick through the photos and if it looks, yeah, kind of right, three stars. And then one stars that just don't really do anything. Anything less than three stars is a bad shot, and I don't see any point in rating it one star or two star. Why grade different levels of crap? Just focus on the three stars and above. Okay, now what I do is go through them once over, look at those three star images, and re-rate them. If they're actually quite decent, bump it up. Four. Yeah, I quite like this shot, how the fake arm in the pocket happens to be holding up the head, and they both have the same expression. And two runners to make him look completely out of place, so yeah, quite right. Five star images, yeah, I'll definitely do something with these images. Three star, four star, well, it really depends how desperate I am for the photos in a video. There always tends to be more 
decent enough shots that I go into videos. You know, some of them are just to show off a burst, noise test sharpness, and just simply because you can't expect to take loads of A-grade shots all the time. With the Yashica Y35 video, the photos were to show how crap the camera is, so it, it didn't really matter that photos I took with it. I wouldn't wipe my bottom with them if they were prints. Sorry, Locke. Nothing to do with your face. Collections, brilliant way of organizing photos. It's a shortcut, so it doesn't copy the photos to each collection, so you can have it in a number of different collections. For my work stuff, initially it ends up in a collection under its project name, video title, then it might end up in landscape or black and white. For this, it makes it a lot easier to access files. Okay, now I've selected the images that I want to work with. The next step is cropping and rotation. Seriously important, which I mentioned in this video, because you can make an all right image better and you can correct those wonky horizons, which is crucial. And then you've got your overlays by pressing O. And you can keep pressing the O button to cycle through the different layouts. Then I use the loop deck control dial thing to crop in gradually. Okay, and you just want to make sure that horizon's nice and straight. And with that control dial, I can just line it up like that. Nice and precise. And that's one thing I love about the control dial is that it, you can have it nice and smooth. Okay, it's cropped. Now it's time to correct it. Jason, look, you've got your knobs here. Always good for another man to tell you where your knobs are, and I like twiddling these knobs, they're dedicated to doing the adjustments that I need doing. I don't really want to drastically change the image, especially most of the time it's for a review, so these are the things that I need to tweak the most. Which I find a much quicker, easier process than using the mouse to, to keep adjusting those sliders left and right. You can always click on auto-tune to see how light we might tweak your image. I've done it before if I'm short on time, but I still prefer to tune it myself. Now, if you're using your mouse, to make those adjustments, say exposure, let's bump that up a bit, okay? And then you can double click the exposure, the word exposure, and that will go back. That was zero. On this keyboardy thing, you just press the knob and it zeroes. As I said, much quicker process. You don't have to keep going to each slider, moving the cursor. It's all here. All the sliders that you see there are here, right? I want to make sure that the highlights are not completely blown. I want some detail on that. Now you've got some tools here. Press J. That will show you if you've lost the details in the highlights. Red, not to be confused with a fake blood on this top, of course. Or shadows, blue. But yeah, at the same time, I don't want the image to be completely flat. One thing I like to go to is the curves here and have a nice little S curve here just to make that image pop a little bit more. Just lift that up a bit. Now, I can't remember why I've seen it, but there was some Lightroom tutorial on the internet that said by doing this, you're crushing the blacks, which is kind of confusing. You're actually lifting it if you're, well, lifting this bit. Crushing it is moving it this way, but you can lift it and crush it at the same time as well. Alternatively, you can invert the S, which gives a flatter look, which works well for black and white images. I don't always decide when I shoot the image, that I want it black and white, but it's useful to press this button here to see what it looks like black and white, just to switch back and forth from color to black and white, color, black and white. Now, apart from that, those little color dials here are useful for black and white. You think, why do you have to make color adjustments on a black and white photo? Let's adjust red and yellow and you'll see. It's similar to if you're shooting black and white film while we're using colored filters, but the great thing is that it's completely reversible here. And then you go, you just click up to reset it. I mean, if you're asking why did I get this, it's because it just takes the tedium out of moving your mouse to adjust those sliders. You've, you've got it all here. It's just having that physical control. It just feels, it feels more precise, all right? Now, just to ensure that I haven't completely cocked up the image, and you either do that by hitting the slash, falling backwards, sounds like a bathroom accident that happens when you're a bit tipsy, or before and after on the keyboard here, the loop deck keyboard. Wish I'd done that when I first processed this image because it's way too saturated. Blah. I want to take off a bit of the saturation, bump the exposure a bit just to bring out a little bit more of detail in the foreground. Could always apply a graduated filter in Lightroom to bring down the exposure of the sky. Now, have a look before and after. Looks a bit more natural, although could make the sky a little bit less prominent with that blue. Otherwise, all right. Okay, ready to go, export. So that's it, that's my Lightroom workflow. It's always gonna be changing over the months and years because I'm always finding out new ways to make it smoother and speedier, which Jason is why I got the Loop Deck Plus 
plus, it's got plus there. Because let's face it, photo editing can be a bit of a tedious task, especially when you're going through a lot of photos and you just want to take that tedium out. Having gotten into Lightroom workflow now and since getting the Loop Deck Plus and using it for a while now, I do appreciate how it makes my whole workflow, well, flow better. For sure, it's been a great help easing me into the Lightroom way and I hope that this unusually serious video can help anyone who's getting into Lightroom ease them into this Adobe software. Oh, one day they're going to be a big company for sure.